Good morning, good morning. This is your friendly neighborhood one man here. I want to talk to you today about marketing a little bit. Let's look at some key concepts in marketing. This obviously is not comprehensive, but we'll go through a few. Market research. It involves a systematic gathering, recording, and analysis of data about customers, competitors in the market as a whole. You want to not go into this blind, right? So you need to have this primary objective, which is to provide insights into consumer preferences, purchasing behaviors, market trends, and competitive landscapes through, you know, techniques, maybe such as surveys, polls, focus groups, data analysis, right? Everything's about big data now. Market research helps businesses make informed decisions regarding product development, pricing, promotion, and different strategies for distribution. What about market segmentation? Well, market segmentation is the process of dividing a heterogeneous market into a smaller, more manageable segments based on shared characteristics or certain needs. You want to identify distinct groups of consumers with similar preferences, demographics, psychographics, or behaviors. And whatever your business is, you might be able to tailor it to your marketing efforts to better meet the needs of each segment. You want to go after certain segments, you may ignore other segments, but you want to always know who is your, your key customer base you're going for. Targeted messaging, efficient resource allocation, and ultimately trying to enhance customer satisfaction and profitability because the best customer is the one you don't lose. Customer retention and engagement. It's important to retain customers and engage them at all times because that's essential for sustaining long-term business success. Retaining existing customers is often more cost effective than acquiring new ones, as loyal customers tend to generate the highest amounts of revenue and act as brand advocates. Engagement involves building meaningful relationships with customers through personalized interactions, valuable content, and exceptional customer service. Think about that, your gold card status, your platinum status, different levels of membership. By fostering loyalty, trust, and satisfaction, businesses can increase their customer lifetime value and reduce churn rates, which is going to drive sustainable growth. What about seizing the market share, right? You wanna get your slice of the pie. Well, seizing market share involves capturing a greater or larger portion of total sales within a specific industry or a particular market segment. Um, there are strategies you can use to get to this, right? Like, in other words, you can use something like product differentiation, you can use pricing strategies, you can use distribution channels, and you can use marketing campaigns uh, by outperforming your competitors, right? You want to beat them to the punch and satisfying unmet customer needs because you want to get into the psychology of your, of your customer. Businesses can gain a competitive edge and they can expand their market presence. However, seizing market share requires ongoing innovation, agility and strategic execution to effectively respond to the changing market dynamics as well as customer preferences. Uh, competitive advantage. This refers to unique strengths or capabilities that enable a business to outperform its rivals and to achieve superior performance in the marketplace. This could be based on factors such as product quality. This could be based on brand reputation. This could be based on cost leadership, innovation, or customer service. By leveraging competitive advantages, businesses can differentiate themselves from their competitors and attract more customers and sustain profitability over time. However, maintaining a competitive advantage requires continuous investment. You've got to keep giving, right? You've got to, you know, take your, uh, um, your sales, your revenues, and you want to pour that back into the business because you need to adapt and you need to be vigilant. And you need to stay ahead in a constantly evolving business landscape. Remember, there are sharks out there in those red waters, right? In summary, Market research, segmentation, customer retention, seizing market share, and competitive advantage are all integral components of an effective marketing strategy. By understanding customer needs, segmenting the market, nurturing good customer relationships, retaining those customers, strategically positioning yourselves in the marketplace, poised to take over certain areas or segments, businesses can drive growth, profitability, and long-term success. Think about this. Uh, let me just kind of throw this out there for you. You know, it might be that at one point in time, let's say you're, you're making copy machines. And so the big name for copy machines was once Xerox. 
But do you hear about Xerox as much now as you did back then, right? Because Xerox almost became synonymous with copier machines and people would even say, oh, I'm going to make a Xerox, right? That was then. But what did Xerox do to actually maintain its supremacy and dominance in the market? It made a lot of choices, some of them which we can play Monday morning quarterback and say, well, maybe some of those choices weren't wise. What about the fact that Windows, right? If you look at Windows, Windows is a operating system that really kind of surpassed uh, versions of Unix, versions of DOS, right? Where you literally are on the screen and you're typing out 50 bazillion commands. You can't remember what the single commands are. It's, it's so complicated. How do you make that user friendly? How do you make that better, right? Well, uh, Xerox had a facility, I believe, uh, in Palo Alto, where they did a lot of research into a lot of different things. And what you're going to find is, is that these individuals were actually ahead of the curve. In other words, Xerox actually was really the one that came up with this uh, Windows operating system as you know it today. In other words, you have, for example, Bill Gates, um, and you also have Steve Jobs. And these are up and coming business people in the 70s that were working towards finding out ways to make things better uh, uh, as they go into the 80s and the 90s and beyond, um, that they needed new ideas. And one of the ideas that actually came to them was that they had been to the Palo Alto facility at Xerox. And when they got there, they were shown Xerox's operating system, which essentially looks like a lot of what you see today in terms of operating systems, whether you're using OS X through Apple or whether you're using um, Windows through Microsoft Windows or any other variation. There are other different operating systems and they're not just limited to Windows and um, OS X. There's also Linux itself. Um, and there are you know, other, other things like maybe like um, BSD is another kind of operating system. And that all those can have what they call graphical user interfaces, which are the ability to, instead of having to remember 50 million commands, different options, you're typing this, you're typing that, oh, I did a parameter wrong, I made a mistake there, I misspelled this, you know, I goofed that. You just have this, this operating system where you can literally take your mouse and you can look through menu options. And then once you hit those menu options, the operating system is going to do the work for you. That would have been a brilliant opportunity. Imagine if Xerox had been ahead of the curve. Imagine if Xerox had known what it had on its hands, that it would revolutionize the world as we know it, and they started developing that before companies like Microsoft or Apple. Or even IBM also at one point was a very dominant force in the computing industry. They're still there to this day, but they don't have the dominance that they once had in years past. They also had their opportunity to also get in on that. And I believe um, there was some sort of um, thing that they developed, but it was not poorly negotiated. And it was in conjunction with uh, Bill Gates and Microsoft. And he essentially left them some sort of a crippled Windows operating system, which did, you know was just, it was not user friendly. It didn't catch on. Eventually, uh, Windows became dominant in terms of PCs, where you're installing the software, and Apple had its own proprietary software on its equipment. Um, both of these individuals took different turns, and they became the dominant supreme force in the industry because their competitors did not look at some of these marketing strategies that we talked about today because they could have gotten ahead of these companies, and they could have been the ones that are raking in billions to this day. So just think about that. Think about the fact that you're always looking for the next best idea. You're always looking to find ways to uh, tap into the mind of the customer so you can know what they want and what they need even before they know what they want and what they need, right? So I hope these marketing concepts are uh, helpful to you. I hope this discussion today has been helpful to you. As always, this is Woody here. Uh, have a wonderful day. I love you. Um, look out for more future content. Take care. Bye.